Yes, hi, all brothers. Uh, in the name of the Lord, thank you so much for being here. I welcome all of you. I am one who came from the East, from South Korea. My name is Lee Man Hee, instructor. I am here today, and the content that I will be testifying to all of you is what I have seen, what I have heard, and what I have been commanded to speak from Jesus. What I have heard and seen, and have been commanded by Jesus to speak, is not just worldly things. It's not only just about history that came down from the past. Jesus, just like He spoke through His disciples, and through His disciples, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven was testified to the ends of the earth. And He says, once it does, the end will come. That end has now come. The word that has been fulfilled was testified as a gospel by Jesus as a prophecy for the past 2,000 years. So Jesus, He made this known to the ends of the world for the past 2,000 years. However, today, I am not here to speak about the prophecies of the New Testament of what will happen in the future. I am here to testify that that prophecy has been fulfilled in Korea, in South Korea. And I am here to testify to what I have seen and heard because I was at the location of fulfillment. So I am here to testify according to what I was commanded to speak, which is why I am standing here. This is the last work of God, and because this is the last work of God, it is the fulfillment of the Lord. That's why this is something that never happened in the past and will never happen again in the future. This revelation, once it's fulfilled, after it's fulfilled, God's purpose is fulfilled. And we, who are believers believing in God's promise, are people then who will have our hopes fulfilled as well. So God's will, God's purpose, once it's all fulfilled, then God will meet His Sabbath rest too. And us, we will meet our Sabbath rest together with our Lord. That's why what was promised in the New Testament, it was told to us in advance so that when it does fulfill, we will actually believe them. We believe in the promises of the New Testament, but if we don't believe in the fulfillment of those promises, then it, it's all meaningless. The prophecies that we believed were, are all meaningless if we don't believe in the fulfillment. You know, Jesus and, the, and God, they desired to save us, and in order to bring salvation to mankind, God gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, to die for us. What is it that God wants from us? What is it He desires? He desires for us to believe in the fulfillment of the New Testament once it fulfills. All of you, this is truly so precious. Is it something we shouldn't believe? We should believe, right? We can't be superficial believers where we just go back and forth to church then when God's promises fulfill, they, will not, they could care less. They wouldn't care. <laughs> However, if we are believers where we truly desire for God's promises to fulfill and we await for that day, then when you hear th this news, I ask you confirm it, examine it for yourselves, believe it, and gain salvation. All of you, Everyone, you know, as you know, when we attend churches, we all have pastors there. But I am not just a general pastor. Just like what was spoken before, I am here to testify to the words of Jesus. And not only that, 
But once Jesus fulfills His promises, He desires to make that known to all churches, and I am a messenger sent to testify on behalf of that. That's why, again, this is something that never happened in the past, never will ever happen again in the future. This is a work where God's promises are being fulfilled. So please examine it, confirm it, believe it, and fulfill salvation in your life. I fervently desire. <laughs> Now, let's dive into the Word of God. It's the word of revelation. The four Gospels were recorded, so were the epistles. But all that content is also recorded in Revelation, which is why I am desiring to speak to you about the book of Revelation. The summary of Revelation, once the, it is all seen and heard, there is a conclusion. Recorded. The conclusion of Revelation is all written in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 8. It's the summary of all of Revelation. So again, the summary of Revelation is from verses 1 to verse 8 of chapter 1. That's what I desire to speak to you. But first, I'm going to speak to you a little bit about Revelation before I begin. In Isaiah chapter 29, it talks about a sealed book. And just the way it is prophesied, uh, Jesus testified according to scriptures. God, he prophesied through the prophets, but no one understood what those prophecies really meant at that time. That's why if you look in Ezekiel chapters 1, 2, and 3, The scroll is open, and the scroll is given to Jesus. It was given to Jesus at the first coming, and he testified to the fulfillment of the Old Testament. That's why it says in scriptures that no one can know the Father only through the Son, Jesus, and to those who he revealed it to. So in scriptures, there is a true God, and there is also a fake God. There's something called a true God and a fake God, but... It says, we can only know the true God only through the Son, Jesus Christ, and only to whom He reveals it to. That's how we can know the true God. What happens once we get to know the true God? We will be able to gain eternal life. That's what it says in John chapter 17, verse 3. <coughs> Furthermore, This book of Revelation that Apostle John recorded is a prophecy, a vision that he received regarding the future. So we could call that a vision revelation. Again, Apostle John received a vision revelation regarding what is to fulfill in the future. So we can say they are all prophecies. But all of that was, that was recorded in Revelation was not the fulfillment. It, they were not realities. They were just a vision that he recorded. If there's a vision revelation, there's also something called the fulfillment of Revelation as well. Prophets like Isaiah uh, and the prophets of the Old Testament, they all recorded vision revelations. Revelations they received in a vision. But Jesus, however, he did not speak a vision revelation. He actually testified to the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Just like that, even with myself, I am not speaking of prophecies. I am not here to speak about vision revelations. I am here to testify, make known that the fulfillment of revelation is here. I have seen and heard those events, and I am here to testify to them. Chapter, chapter 18 talks about the home of demons. It says, all nations are drunk of maddening wine of adultery. They all fell off. But what happens with 19 now? Now the wedding banquet of the Lamb occurs. After the judgment of chapter 18, finally the, uh, the wedding banquet of the Lamb appears. But at the wedding banquet of the Lamb, uh, many people are invited. Even the birds. Are they real birds? It's referring to spirit, right? Yes, all the spirits, the spirits of martyrs. So there's flesh invited, spirits are also invited there. But in chapter 18, 
uh, and in 19, uh, it talks about uh, people and animals. Uh, it talks about oxen. Uh, in Matthew chapter uh, 23, about the wedding banquet of the Lamb, it talks about the oxen, t h a t and bees. So the betrayed oxen, uh, the destroyers, so betrayers and destroyers are all now captured. And the wedding banquet of the Lamb occurs. The spirits come there, now the flesh also flee there, and they all unite. But in Revelation chapter 20, with the souls of martyrs and those who are alive, unite as one and participate in the first resurrection. Is that not what you want? It says that they will reign with Christ with Him for a thousand years. If I go all the way to chapter 22, there's just not enough time and I might get in trouble for going over my time. So I will finish with chapter 20. But what I truly ask of you, all of you, It says, even at the time of Noah, you know, destruction came upon them suddenly. Even at the time of Lot, they didn't know, but destruction came upon them suddenly as well, too. In the world, what did Jesus say? He said, it is like the time of Noah and Lot. They will marry uh, and uh, drink and marry. But why? It's because these things are happening. Please believe in the words of Jesus. And if we're going to be believers, Don't be someone without knowledge of scriptures. Be those who are knowledgeable of the word. And confirm what's being said with scriptures and live with truth. Then we will become God's kingdom and God's priest, right? Yes, this is what God promised. All of you, I'm truly someone who does not have anything to boast about. But I am someone who has seen and heard the events of Revelation. I was even commanded by Christ to tell them, tell everyone, whether they listen or whether they fail to listen, which is why I'm speaking to you today. And because I'm saying something that you've never heard, to you, heard by you, I'm sure it was very hard to understand. But... There are many teachers out there who can make this known and teach it to you in detail. So I really ask that you please study and really learn this in detail. That's what I truly desire of all of you. And just like Revelation is the last book of the Bible, after God fulfills all this, He brings it to an end. He finishes it and He enters the Sabbath rest. Then even with us, let's now become newly recreated with God's seed, right? Be born of God's seed. Just like it says in Luke 8, 11. God's seed is God's word, it says. Let's be recreated and reborn with God's word and be reborn by His Spirit and be new creations. Now we have to become people of heaven, right? Not people of the world and enter heaven together, right? Just like what's fulfilled in heaven, it says it will fulfill here on earth. If the heavens are in the spiritual realm and it's going to fulfill the same way here on earth, then there's heaven here on earth. Let's also, let's unite there where the spirit and flesh unite as one. And that kind of heaven here on earth will fulfill. Please know that. Confirm it for yourselves. And be those who don't lack knowledge. Don't be those who lack faith. But truly, act according to God's will. And all be those who be people of heaven, living in heaven. Please seal the word of God in your hearts. And let's all become those, in Jesus' name, be those in heaven. Thank you so much.